All right, last property of the night here, the inverse property for logarithms. Yeah, um, I'll see if I can get through this so it makes sense to you. But essentially it's this. If you have your base to the log of your base of some number, um, let's call it x, then we know that simplifies just simply to x. Logarithm and exponent are inverses of each other, so they undo each other. So that in itself makes sense, although that's not a proof. <laughs> we would want to prove that. But let me give you some examples, and then we'll work towards a proof. So let's make sure you understand this and the implications of this. Because this is kind of the coolest, uh, coolest thing you can use here uh, in the whole logarithmic world. <sighs> Maybe not the coolest, but... <laughs> anyway, you've got um, any number. Let's say it's 10. And since 10 is the common log as well, that would be log, and then let's say we had y. So I know 10 to the log of y, since there would, if there's no base there, we know it's a 10. That would just simplify to y. And if we went and got a little crazy and uh, went the other way and did the same thing well let, let's yeah let's just keep going with this for now let me not move to the next level yet so let's say we had uh, um, 18 log base 18 of x squared well, uh, you know, hit pause. What would you have? Okay. Well, that would be simply x squared. You know, all this stuff inverts itself, and you're left with, that just kind of falls out of there. Okay. So let's uh, do move on here a little bit. I'm talking slow. I apologize. But let's say we had uh, 10 log of 1,000. So again, let's kind of head back to that natural logarithm idea with base 10, because you see it all the time. And let me kind of show you a little bit how this works. And uh, let's see if we can make it happen here. So we know that equals x. So if we converted that to a logarithm, you know, this base in here is the base of our new logarithm. So we'd have log base 10 of x equals log of 1,000. So we know this is going to turn out to be 1,000. Well, log base 10 and log base 10 are the same things. So we know x has to be 1,000. Not a proof again, but hopefully it kind of shows you using the definition of a logarithm. Man, my microphone keeps popping out on me. Anyway, so there's that one. Let's keep going here. Um, let's say we had uh, log um, base 5 of 5 to the x power. Okay. Well, in this case, 2 um, you should just end up with x. So to prove that, let's let this equal to y and convert this to an exponent. So 5 to the y equals 5 to the x. Again, converting the logarithm to an exponent. And so I know y equals x. So you could have you know, drop this stuff off and you're just left with x. So it doesn't matter necessarily how you do it and they're inverses of each other, they they drop out. So um, where this leads to is the natural log and that's probably the most important one for calculus. So natural log of e to the x is simply x and e to the natural log of x is also x. And you use this property a lot when you're solving it, solving formulas. So if you had e to the natural log 
of the square root of x. Or the book will do something goofy like this to you. E to the natural log of x to the one half. <laughs> you would know that that plop that's gone falls out, and so you're left with x to the one half, which is the same as square root of x. You know, get used to that. X to the one half is square root of x. And uh, so that is that property. I, I don't know. Yeah, and we could throw in a little proof of that. Whoops, I went too far back. The inverse property for logarithms. I want to make sure I got that set up. So, so one last time, let's generalize it into something like this. A, and I'll do it both ways. So we'll do A to the log A of Y. We'll split the screen here, and we'll do log base a of a to the y. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause and see what we should get. It shouldn't take long. But I'm going to show that, so here we go, we're going to prove this. So we're going to set this to z in both cases. And what we should end up with at the end is z being equal to y. Okay, I guess how I'm going to prove this is, I'm sure there's probably more comp, more sophisticated ways of doing this. Excuse me. So, I'm going to use the definition for a logarithm. And so, just to kind of, I'll come back to this. A logarithm of any base of x equals y is b to the y equals x where, you know, that's the base of your logarithm, um, this is your exponent. Those are the two things you need to know. So we go back to here, this is the base of my logarithm, this is my exponent. So log a of z equals log a of y. Okay, And so we know, because they're both the same on both sides, z has to be equal to y. And so, yes, indeed, y is your answer there. Same goes here. This one's a little easier even. a to the z equals a to the y. And so we know z has to be equal to y in order for those to be equal. And not a probably rigorous proof for any, uh, by any means, but... Hopefully it shows you how it's derived and how it works and why it works. Because I didn't, I don't think I knew why it worked for many, many years in my mathematical career until I sat down and really spent some time with it. So glad you're spending some time with it, and I will see you next time, and hope this helped you out.